Hallelujah. Praise God. May the name of the Lord be praised and adored. Once again, we thank God. He bless His holiness for how far He has carried us. It is by grace we continue to live and move and have our being in Him. Our God is still on the throne. And still in the business of protecting His own. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you in the name of Jesus. It's once again another day, another beautiful day you have created for us to live and move and have our being in it. Thank you. We commit our body, soul, and spirit into your hands. As we are about to share that word, let it penetrate into our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, in the name of Jesus, that it will find a good soil to plant and germinate and grow to achieve the purpose for which you sent it. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, passage reading is taken from Second Chronicles chapter 16. It is a passage with interesting situation that arose in the days of King Asa of Judah. King Asa was the king in Judah and Basha. Basha was the king in Samaria, that is in the state of Israel, where in the in the olden days, Israel was divided into the southern and, and the northern kingdom. And uh, Kenasa was the king in Jerusalem. And Ken, Ken, Ken Basha was the one who ruled the rest of the tribes of Israel, which made up of ten. At that time, there, 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 there was kind of war between King Asa and Basha. So Basha went to Ramah and fortified it, preventing anyone from coming or going from the territory of King Asa. I, I read, I read from the verse one. I'll be, I'll, I'll be jumping some of the verses. Verse 1, Chronicles chapter 16, verse 1 going. In the 26th year of Asa's reign, Basha king of Israel went up against Judah and fortified Ramah to prevent anyone from leaving or entering the territory of Asa king of Judah. Asa then took the silver and gold out of the treasures of the Lord's temple of his own palace and sent it to Ben Hadad, king of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus. Let there be a treaty between me and you, he said, as there was treaty between my father and your father. See, I am sending you silver and gold. Now break your treaty with Basha, king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from me. Ben-Hadad agreed with King Asher and sent commanders of his forces against the towns of Israel. They conquered uh, Ajon, Dan, Abel, Mim, and all the store cities of Naphtali. When Basha heard this, he stopped building Ramah and abandoned his work. Then King Asher brought all the men of Judah and they carried away from Ramah the stones and the timber Basha had been using with them, he built up Geba and Mespa. At the time, at that time, Hanani the seer came to Asha, king of Judah, and said to him, Because you relied on the king of Aram, not on the king, not on the Lord your God, 
the army of the king of Aram has escaped from your hand. Were not Cushites and Libyans a mighty army with great numbers of chariots and horsemen? Yet when you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord ranges throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. You have done a foolish thing, and from now on you will be at war. Hallelujah. So, we, we see in this passage a king who has been helped by the Lord to do many things and to achieve in his kingdom, in his rule, who has just turned away from the Lord, no more relying on the might and the power of the king and the ruler and the supreme authority within their realm, which was the Lord God himself. Elohim, Yahweh, was his name. Asa has refused to rely on him. Because when an, an enemy, an army, from the camp of his enemy, besiege him, trying to block everybody from moving in and out of his territory, who had actually confederated himself with the king of Aram, that is the king of Israel and the king of Ar Aram, were together trying to come against the king of is the king of Judah, who was Asa. So Asa, sitting in his on his throne which was the throne David Satan in Judah was afraid because after all there were only two tribes that were with him in Judah and the, ty the other ten tribes were, with, were within the kingdom of Israel itself so as a, I believe he might have been afraid and the easiest way was that he turned into man. He turned to man for support. Instead of looking up and going to his, his God, his father. The one that has made it possible for him to even sit on the throne and to stay alive. So the Bible says that he did not seek the help of God. He sought the help of man. Beloved, it is easy for us also to forget in our time of crisis that there is a God who answered by fire. It is easy to quote Bible and to say all the right things when everything is going on well with you, with you than for you to say those things when you are in trouble. I pray that we will always remember the Lord. The God that has made it possible for us to live and to move and to have our being in Him Till this day, the one that prevented death from coming near our tents, the one that helped us, sustained us, brought us from 2021 with all the raging pandemic of, of the day. He brought us from 2020 into 2021 and he carried us through on the wings of an eagle in 2021 and he has brought us here into 2022 that same god is capable of protecting us should anything come near our tents because he is our protector he is our deliverer he is our very great reward when we seek him with all our hearts our soul and our spirit if god could not protect us he wouldn't have created us let us always go to him. After all, the Bible says that we should come before the throne of, of grace in boldness where we will find grace and mercy to help us in our time of need. Let us hold on unto him. The God who is able to protect 
and to keep us and has protected us and has brought us this far. Whatever that is bothering you, whatever that will come at you this year, remember him. He is able to take you through. He is able to protect you. If God has protected you to this day, and no dog, no lion, no evil demonic attack has been able to destroy your life. He is still able to protect you in 2022. So that though you may walk in the valley, in the shadow of death, you too will fear no evil. For God is with you. For God is your protector. For in Christ, you are more than a conqueror. Because through him, he gives you the strength, the ability, the enablement to be able to navigate the difficulties in this life. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will strengthen us, give us the grace to be able to stand in times of trouble. Then, uh, the Bible said that because Asa has relied on the king of Aram, he has allowed his enemy to escape. Many a times, when we don't go to our God, in times of trouble, we allow our enemies to get away with the troubles they've caused us. Let us hold fast to our feet. Let us stand with our God. Let us wait for him. For in it lies our success. For he who said that the enemy you see today, you will not see tomorrow. When he is in the midst of the equation, he solves it all. Making sure that you get the relief that is due you. So, uh, uh, if the 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 same passage is also telling us that the eyes of the Lord is moving across, is watching every activity. It is going to and fro through the earth to strengthen them, to be in behalf of those whose hearts are committed to him. Because our God is the rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. And his word, he said in the beginning was his word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. This word, the Bible makes us understand that that is the tool that is able to the divide asunder, even to the dividing, and knowing the intents and purposes of the human heart. So today, our God, and his eyes are moving through the earth, looking and seeking for those whose hearts are committed to him. He said, For the eyes of the Lord rage throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. You, but because can Asa did a foolish thing in the eyes of God, depending on man. He let his enemies escape, only to come again in the days of his children. And unfortunately, he still did not learn any lesson from it. He put the messenger that brought the message to him in prison. He was so angry with him that he imprisoned him. He asked them to arrest him. So, before he died, 
the Bible says that in the in the thirty in the thirty ninth year of the reign of Asa of his reign, in the thirty ninth year of his reign, Asa was afflicted with a disease in his feet. So then he has come. He had a disease. He was not well. His feet contracted a disease. A disease that was supposed to take him to his death. But let's see what he did again. His heart was unrepentant. Because he was still holding on to whatever he was holding on to. Looking to men. The Bible says that though his disease was severe, even in his illness, he did not seek help from the Lord, but only from the doctors. So when, when, when uh, at the at the top of the at the top of Second Chronicles chapter sixteen, the theme says that Asa's last years. So in his last years, he forgot about his God. He forgot about his God. Let us hold on to him. Whilst we may be young. Whilst the days have not come. When the Bible says we shall say we did not find any comfort in, it, in them. Let us hold on to him now. Jesus is passing this way. Let us hold on to the helm of his attire. For as the woman held on to it. He says even if I touch him. Even if I hold on to the helm of his attire, I'll be healed. Let us hold on to him. Because the source of power, the source of grace, the source of mercy, the source of favor is in the Lord. Jesus is here today. What is it that bothers you this day? Let us take it all to him. Let us hum be humble enough to be able to kneel before him and to pronounce that which bothers of us to him. Because Asa in times of war depended on human beings. Because in times of his hell illness, he still did not depend on his God. He depended on, on doctors only. The Bible says that he finally, then in the in the forty first year of his reign, Asa died and rested with his with his ancestors. I am not saying we are not going to die or nobody is going to leave this earth, but let us hold on to our God. Let us hold on to Him, because He holds the answers, answers to the mysteries that confront us, answers to the difficult situations that we face. Because in, in, the, in this passage, if you read it carefully, it made analogy to the fact that when he depended on God, he was successful. When we depend on God, we are here this day. Let us continue to depend on him, to hold on to him. For he who has been faithful to us will continue to be faithful. The storms may rage, but remember, when you are God, when you are with your God, you say the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against all the storms that the devil brings against you. May the Lord bless you. May he sustain you. And may you remember that the God that has brought you into this year, he's still alive. He's still faithful. He will carry you through. May he bless you in the name of Jesus. And may you find peace under his shadow. In the name of Jesus. Shalom. Peace.